Uh, Liam McLaughlin. McLaughlin? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Uh, Victoria Open Wi-Fi Project. Hi, my name is Liam. Uh, I'm here to talk about the internet. It's uh, a fundamental technology that, oh, actually I'm here from the Net Institute Society, and uh, we're an enterprising not-for-profit. Uh, we are less than six months old, but we are moving quite quickly. Uh, and as I said, I'm here to talk about the internet. Uh, the internet's uh, fundamental tech or foundational te technology. Every, pretty much everything anybody's talked about here today has been predicated on, uh, if it's had to do with technology, it's been predicated on the internet. Twitter is awesome, but you need the internet to make it work. Like I said, if you haven't heard of it, it's awesome. You need to get on the net. <laughs> Canada's, uh, in Canada, we've got about 33 million people in the country. The, those stats are a little bit old. But roughly two-thirds of the population is on the internet at least once a day, and in most cases, three times a day. Now, that's email, that's Twitter, that's uh, online gaming, that's banking, that's pretty much any interaction with either the graphical web or the internet, and those are two separate things. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, like I said, there are two different things. There's the graphical web, and that's websites. That's all the awesome stuff that we really like to use. Uh, Google, government websites, IMDb, online shopping. But then there's other things like uh, APIs, which is pretty much, uh, which is a programming term. Uh, if you use a smartphone and you use an application that gets on YouTube or Twitter, you're using an API. And basically what that means is it's a background web call that says, hey, this nice little user interface on my phone actually corresponds to a link on the internet. Uh, it's a really quick and dirty way to make, make things really pretty and work really well. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't know what they are, that's fine. You use them all the time. Uh, there's other things like apps for, like I said, apps for smartphones, uh, VoIP, instant messaging, all online games. Those are all things that use the internet uh, that we don't really think of as the internet. If I'm playing you know, games on my Xbox, I'm using the internet. But you don't really think about it that way. Your clock is actually set to using the internet. Uh, it is a foundational technology. Internet access in Canada is expensive. Uh, we rank about 20th, 17th, 20th, somewhere in, there in the world. Uh, most, most ISPs don't actually provide what is legally termed as broadband. In Canada, broadband is 1.5 megabits per second. Uh, most companies do not provide that, despite saying that they provide broadband. Uh, about a third of the population in Canada is using broadband internet, uh, and they are paying through the nose Dial-up is like 10 bucks a month for a low end, uh, and that gives you pretty decent access uh, and gets you really, it does get you basic access. Email, news, stuff like that works really well. Uh, new media stuff, YouTube, Facebook, tend to be a little bit slower. Uh, as you go up the, the uh, access speed, prices get, get increasingly more expensive, and mobile access, like a data, a data plan for your phone or for your iPad or whatever you might be, whatever mobile device you might be having is relatively expensive, uh, and it in, indeed is a luxury item in Canada. Uh, we're working on something for Victoria. Uh, it's, uh, it's slow going. We're, uh, we're dragging our feet a little bit because we have to be smart and careful. Uh, but we're working to build a wireless mesh network for the city of Victoria. Uh, and the previous speaker touched on mesh networks. I'm going to try to explain them just a little bit. Uh, mesh networks basically are independent nodes, so little radios like your uh, Wi-Fi router at home and they talk to each other. And when they talk to each other, they decide which route is the most efficient to send that data through. So if you had five, five nodes, and they're all within range of each other, they could all talk to each other, they will figure out which way is the fastest way to move your data through those connections. If one of them drops out, well, that's fine. It, they keep talking to each other, and they say, oh, that one's missing. What's the next best route? Uh, if you had another one, they do the same thing. It's like, oh, there's a new one in the neighborhood. Let's, is that faster? Let's use that. So they become self-healing, self-growing, uh, self-repairing networks to a certain extent. Uh, we were asking about, uh, the group of us that have started this project, we were asking, why isn't there a public offering? And where can you get the internet for, for, uh, for free? Because right now it is a retail product and you pay quite a bit for it. Uh, you can go to coffee shops, but then you're kind of locked into what you're doing and there's some security concerns there. You can go to the library, but you end up with the same, same concerns and you're also tied to a, a geographic location, a specific place. You have to sit there and wait for the internet, and you may not have access to the latest tools, which in some cases uh, can be a big issue. Uh, we asked, what does it look like to be, if it were a public service, what, what would that take, and how would that happen? Uh, and do we trust government to do it? <laughs> now, government, they would do an awesome job. It would be rock solid, because they have to make sure that that infrastructure works. And we are looking at the internet as a piece of infrastructure, which 
until recently, it hasn't really been discussed that way. So public service, what does that mean? It means basic access. And for us, basic access means, doesn't mean YouTube, it doesn't mean new media, it doesn't mean downloading things. It means I can get communications, so email, and I can do text-based searches. I can do basic research to find out more. We want to build a wireless mesh network that covers the city. Now, to do that, you need, you need to be connected to the internet. Having that network there works great, but if it's not hooked up to the internet and you can't get online, it's not really doing anything. So where does that connection, where do those connections come from? And in Victoria, they could come from a couple of places. We looked at it and we said, what about small business? Almost every small business has an internet connection and has a stake on the internet. They, either they're using it for ordering, they're using it for messaging, whatever they use it for, they have a connection to the, in, their, in the place of business. In a lot of places, they, it's for their debit machine. It's for their point of sale, and that doesn't take a lot of bandwidth. So they have some to share. Now, how do you make that attractive to business? You have to give them something that's valuable to, to them. Uh, asking them to give away the internet for free, not a lot of value there for, for a small business. Uh, what is valuable for small business? Advertising and communication and engaging with their, their customers. So, how, does that, how do all those things fit together? Let's get to hand a little bit. Uh, well, you have to give them a piece of advertising. And with, with the mesh network, you have the opportunity to put something called a captive portal on each device. And in fact, there's one available here in, in the room. Uh, if you, connect, open up your, or if you turn on your mobile device and you go to connect to a Wi-Fi network, look for Mesh Mesh. And I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, the capture portal is like in a hotel or an airport. It says, here's our end user license. You may have to pay a certain amount. Click here to continue, and then you're allowed to use the internet. I'll show you what, what ours looks like in a second. Uh, so to build value for the business and to share out their internet, we said, put one of our devices in. It'll have a captive portal on it, and you'll get a piece of advertising that Anybody that connects it has to look at every two hours. So that advertising is their logo, uh, their address, their hours, and eventually will be their Twitter feed, but we're working on that. Uh, like I said, there's one available here. I invite you to open up and turn on your, uh, your devices and connect to MeshMesh. Uh, the name MeshMesh actually uh, comes is a description of the, the way that we're going about it. Uh, that's a whole other story. It turns out that it's also uh, an Egyptian phrase that means in the apricot. Uh, and the, ter the phrase is actually fell mesh mesh. And what that means, it, it's, it's akin to once in a blue moon or it's never going to happen. And the reason why, why uh, it's, it, it is that term is because in Egypt, apricots are, are, are very, uh, very popular, but they're only available for a very short amount of time. And so it doesn't happen very often. And you only have a small window. It seemed apropos for what we're trying to do. So. Mesh Mesh. Mesh Mesh is the network that we're trying to build. And like I said, it comes with, it's a captive portal. This is what it looks like on your laptop. <coughs> on your phone, it turns into a single column. Uh, for web developers, that means you know, everything is vertical. And it's very simple to use. You connect to the network. You type in your URL, google.com, Facebook, doesn't matter. It will bring this up automatically. And all you have to do is click on agree and, continue, and to continue. That gives you access to the internet for two hours before you have to look at this page again. Seems like a pretty good deal. Our devices are about 100 bucks. It's, uh, it, there is no reset switch, there's no power switch. It's a single cable that goes into it, so it is dead simple. And that's how this thing has to work, is it has to be super, super simple. Uh, I have a passion for accessible technology, and I have a passion for, for making technology accessible to people. Uh, Wi-Fi is everywhere. It's not a brand new technology. In fact, more and more devices have it every day. Uh, cameras, phones, iPod, or tablets, your uh, ebook reader, they all have a Wi-Fi connection. If you want to be able to use, or they have a, uh, a cellular connection, and if you want to be able to get online using those devices, you have to either pay for it, or you have to scavenge it from someone else. Why not, why not meet in the middle? Give people a, a, something that's valuable to them to share out and, uh, and allow people to get online. With, it, with making the internet available publicly and having a ubiquitous network, it enables us to do a lot of really interesting things. Uh, getting the internet free is awesome, but it's even better when you're using a, a VoIP phone to get inexpensive calls because having a cellular plan is really expensive. If there's Wi-Fi everywhere, I can use a mobile VoIP phone. I, I'm putting Skype on my handset, I can use a recycled handset, 
and get really inexpensive calls. If I'm a single incoming family or a low income earning family, that is incredibly valuable to me. More so, it, it allows us to put out information in the sets that are normally not aggregated and not available quite easily. Uh, we can get, instead of uh, putting advertising on here, we could put municipal information, your election date and location for your neighborhood, changing garbage schedules, changing watering schedules, putting that right in front of people so that it's very easy to find out where that is and when that happens. Those kind of, that kind of accessibility doesn't really exist. And if it does, it's predicated on having access to the internet. There's lots of social media talks today, and they're all fascinating. Social media is amazing. It, it's a fantastic tool that lets us do a lot of really incredible things. But you need the internet to do it, and you need access to the internet. Uh, the, rain, the raincoat thing, allowing home, uh, giving access to homeless people or to, or to uh, impoverished people, that's really important. But how do you do that inexpensively, and how do you do that easily? Being able to share it out through the, through the, the community and embedding it in the community this way because there is such value on the device that's, that's providing it makes it easy and makes it available for everyone. And because we're, we're using a mesh technology, once you have one store that has their device in there with their captive portal, Hit Baby is our first location. Uh, we're working on a couple more. You can add other nodes outside of that that aren't connected to the internet. We can put, we can put another one of our, our nodes you know, within 100 feet of the store and share out the internet from there, adding the range to a, an extra 100 feet out from where we are. And we can do that several times. Uh, you don't really want to go more than three, but you can go up to about five or six hops and still get usable internet. And when I say usable internet, I don't mean high speed. I don't mean the same speed you're going to get on your phone through, uh, through your Rogers or through your Bell plan. I mean, you can get online, you can count to 30, you can count to 60, and your page will load. That's really important. We, we do take the internet for, for granted in Canada. It is a luxury item, and, and it is something that needs to be made available much more uh, ubiquitously. Uh, Mesh Mesh is coming. We're, uh, we're slowly working on it. And uh, hopefully we uh, will have it by the end of the year. That's kind of the whole thing.